get a fast car I want a ticket to anywhere You can say, baby Baby Music, an art form that has the power to unite, to convey stories, and to resonate with the emotions of countless listeners. Yet, beneath its harmonies and melodies lie tales of struggle, representation, and recognition. What happens when a classic song, echoing dreams and despair, is brought back to the limelight by a new artist? And what if this narrative transformation unearths deeper, more unsettling truths about the music industry? Such is the story of Tracy Chapman's iconic Fast Car, its 2023 resurgence, and the debates it sparked. I don't think anyone expected a record from a solo singer songwriter to um, be received in the way that my, my first record was. Before her rise to fame, the music industry's landscape was vastly different, dominated by pop ballads, rock anthems, and the burgeoning world of hip hop. Amidst this backdrop, Tracy Chapman emerged, bringing with her a raw authenticity that was both refreshing and revolutionary. Born in Cleveland, Ohio, Chapman's early life was marked by challenges that would later become central themes in her music. Growing up in a difficult neighborhood, she witnessed firsthand the issues of poverty, racial discrimination, and social injustice. Moreover, these experiences shaped her worldview, instilling in her a deep sense of empathy and a burning desire to make a difference. Interestingly, her her passion for social justice was not just limited to her lyrics. Even as a student at Tufts University, Chapman was actively involved in social causes, lending her voice to protests and gatherings. This commitment to activism was a hallmark of her character, demonstrating a depth that went beyond her music. As Chapman began to find her voice as an artist, she adopted a folk rock style, drawing inspiration from legends like Bob Dylan and Joan Baez. Her music was characterized by its simplicity, both in terms of instrumentation and lyrics. Yet it was this very simplicity that made her stand out. Chapman had an uncanny ability to distill complex social issues into relatable narratives, capturing the essence of the human experience. In the late 80s, when much of the music industry was driven by glitz and glamour, Chapman's raw and unfiltered approach was a stark contrast. Her debut album, Tracy Chapman, released in 1988, was a testament to her unique style. Tracks like Talkin' About a Revolution and Baby Can I Hold You resonated with audiences worldwide, not just for their melodic beauty, but for the powerful messages they conveyed. Additionally, while many artists of the era leaned heavily on promotional tactics, Chapman's rise was more organic. Word of mouth played a significant role in her growing popularity. Fans were drawn to her genuine nature and her ability to convey profound emotions without resorting to theatrics. Chapman's breakout track, Fast Car, from her debut album, encapsulated her essence perfectly. The song, a poignant narrative of dreams, aspirations, and the harsh realities of life struck a chord with listeners. Its narrative was universal, speaking of the human desire for a better life and the challenges that often stand in the way. The song's success was a testament to Chapman's artistry. Shockingly, while it was critically acclaimed and loved by fans, it didn't achieve the coveted number one spot on the charts upon its initial release. This oversight in many ways foreshadowed the challenges Chapman would face in her career. Despite her undeniable talent and the depth of her music, the industry often seemed unprepared or perhaps unwilling to give her the recognition she deserved. As the years progressed, the singer continued to produce soul-stirring music, never compromising on her values or her commitment to social justice. Songs like Give Me One Reason and The Promise further solidified her place as a musical icon, showcasing her evolution as an artist. The vast expanse of country music with its ballads echoing love, heartbreak, and the southern way of life has long been a beloved genre in America. However, the faces and voices representing this genre have largely been white. This racial divide isn't a mere coincidence, but is rooted in a complex history of exclusion and cultural appropriation. Country music, intriguingly, owes much of its origins to black musicians. The banjo, a staple instrument in country tunes, has its roots in Africa. Early black musicians played a blend of African rhythms with Western tunes on plantations, influencing what would later become known as country music. Yet, over time, as country music began to commercialize, the black influence was overshadowed, with white faces becoming the predominant representation. 
Moreover, the Grand Ole Opry, a weekly country music stage concert in Nashville, Tennessee, began in the 1920s and played a pivotal role in shaping country music's identity. While the Opry showcased numerous talents and cemented Nashville's status as the country music capital, black artists were conspicuously absent from its stage for many years. This absence was a reflection of the broader racial dynamics of America at the time. Shockingly, it wasn't until 1993, long after the civil rights movement, that the Grand Ole Opry invited its first black member, Deford Bailey, to perform. This late acknowledgement was a stark reminder of the deep-seated biases that still persisted in the industry. The challenges for black artists didn't stop at mere representation. Those who did break through face pigeonholing often pushed to adopt a style that aligned more with R&B or blues than country. This stereotyping wasn't just restrictive, but also robbed black artists of the chance to showcase their versatility and true passion for country music. As the years progressed, a handful of black artists like Charlie Pride and Darius Rucker made significant inroads into the country music scene. Their success was notable, not just for their exceptional talent, but for the barriers they had to overcome. Conversations with these artists often revealed tales of backstage discrimination, radio stations refusing to play their songs, and a constant feeling of being the other in a space they loved. Additionally, for black women in country music, the journey was even more challenging. The intersections of race and gender meant they faced a double-edged sword of biases. Their voices, often rich with emotion and depth, were overshadowed by industry preferences that favored white female artists. This systemic bias meant that many talented black female artists were left out of mainstream narratives, their contributions only acknowledged in niche circles. It was against this backdrop that Tracy Chapman's Fast Car emerged. While her original song was not strictly a country ballad, its themes of aspiration, longing, and escape resonated deeply with country music's ethos. Yet, as previously highlighted, the song, despite its global acclaim, didn't top the charts until Luke Combs, a white artist, covered it. This incident wasn't just a reflection of Chapman's journey, but was emblematic of the broader struggles of black artists in country music. It brought to light the systemic biases that persisted, raising uncomfortable questions about representation, appropriation, and the true essence of country music. We all know music isn't just a form of entertainment. It's a reflection of society, culture, and the personal journeys of the artists. For many, their art is deeply intertwined with their identity, and their work becomes a platform to express, challenge, or celebrate aspects of their lives. Tracy Chapman is one such artist whose life experiences significantly influenced her music. Interestingly, the intricacies of Chapman's identity transcend her being a black artist. Her identity as a lesbian adds another layer to the complexity. The intersectionality of race and sexuality means that Chapman wasn't just fighting one battle against racism in the industry, but was also confronting stereotypes, biases, and prejudices related to her sexuality. In the conservative backdrop of the country music scene and its core audience, LGBTQ representation has always been challenging. While the genre itself speaks of love, heartbreak, and storytelling, the narratives have predominantly been heterosexual. The themes rarely ventured into the realms of queer love or the unique challenges faced by the LGBTQ community. This absence is telling and points towards a reluctance to diversify narratives, even in an evolving world. Admittedly, Chapman always valued her privacy. She refrained from discussing her personal life in public, focusing primarily on her music. Yet the media and the public often feel entitled to every detail of a celebrity's life. The speculation around her sexuality began early in her career, with whispers, innuendos, and often intrusions into her private life. While the singer chose to remain private, the speculation was often more about public curiosity than respecting her personal choices. The constant scrutiny took a toll. Every song and every lyric was dissected to find hints about her sexuality. Was she speaking about a woman? Was that song a reflection of her coming out? Such questions, though seemingly harmless, reflect a deeper problem. It underscores society's obsession with labeling and categorizing, especially when it comes to sexuality. Moreover, Chapman's alignment became another tool for the industry to marginalize her. The few times her sexuality did become a talking point, it wasn't in a celebratory or supportive tone, but was used as a means to typecast her, further alienating her in an industry already resistant to her race.
It's worth noting the broader landscape of LGBTQ plus representation in the music industry during Chapman's time. The late 80s and early 90s were not particularly welcoming to openly queer artists. While there were some like Elton John and George Michael, their journeys were fraught with challenges, public speculation, and career implications. For Chapman, as a black lesbian woman, the intersections of her identity meant that she was navigating a terrain filled with multiple obstacles. Shockingly, this lack of acceptance and representation wasn't just external. Within the LGBTQ community, there have been discussions about racism and exclusion, with black queer individuals often feeling marginalized. This double marginalization, externally from the broader society and internally within the LGBTQ community, further amplifies the challenges faced by artists like Chapman. Because of that, the nuances of Chapman's identity and the struggles she faced provide a crucial lens to view her career. The industry's reaction to her music, the lack of acknowledgement until a white artist covered her song, and the whispered speculations about her sexuality are all interconnected threads. They tell the story of an artist who, despite her immense talent, had to navigate an industry filled with biases, prejudices, and exclusion. When diving deep into the roots of country music, it's impossible to overlook the genre's origins in the diverse musical traditions of working-class Americans, particularly those of Black Americans. From the field haulers of slaves to the Delta blues that rose from the Mississippi, Black artists have been instrumental in shaping the foundational sounds of what we recognize as country music today. Yet, in the evolution of the genre, there is an evident erasure of Black influence an irony that remains a stark reality in today's country music landscape. Additionally, the romanticization of the American South, with its sprawling landscapes and tales of rugged cowboys, belies a history marred by racial segregation and oppression. As country music began gaining traction in the early 20th century, the industry was quick to adopt a narrative that resonated with the predominantly white, conservative base of the American South. This narrative deliberately excluded black voices despite their undeniable contributions. As the years went on, this exclusion transformed from a silent practice to an overt strategy. The Grand Ole Opry, the mecca of country music, is a clear example. As earlier mentioned, historically, it was known to have stringent policies about who could perform, keeping many black artists off its revered stage. The few who broke these barriers, such as DeFord Bailey, found themselves isolated and without the backing needed to sustain a successful career in the industry. Furthermore, the challenges for black artists in country music aren't merely historical footnotes. They persist in contemporary times. The reluctance to play black artists on country radio, the lack of representation at award ceremonies, and the often exclusionary practices of major record labels tell a tale of systemic bias. Black artists find themselves pigeonholed, their sound often branded as too urban for the country, yet too country for other genres. Interestingly, this hesitance to embrace black artists extends beyond the stage and radio waves. The image and branding of country music have consistently depicted a version of Americana that marginalizes black experiences. From music videos to album covers, from festival lineups to merchandise, the overwhelming whiteness of country music is both evident and intentional. On top of that, the few black artists who have made waves in the country music music scene like Charlie Pride or Darius Rucker have shared stories that underline the industry's biases. Their experiences often involve fighting stereotypical assumptions, confronting covert racism, and continuously proving their authenticity to both fans and industry insiders. Yet, amidst these challenges, there are also tales of resilience and resistance. Many black artists in the country genre have found ways to carve out space for themselves, reshaping the narrative and challenging the status quo. They've combined traditional country sounds with elements from other genres, highlighting the genre's multifaceted roots. Their music becomes not just a testament to their talent, but also a powerful statement against the industry's biases. When analyzing the reception of Tracy Chapman's Fast Car cover by Luke Combs, it's crucial to recognize this backdrop. It wasn't just about a popular white artist covering a song by a black artist. It was a reflection of an industry and audience more willing to accept a black artist's work when presented through a white lens. The chart-topping success of Combs' version versus the relative obscurity of Chapman's original in the country scene underscores the deeply entrenched racial biases in the industry. But hope isn't lost. With the increasing global influence of music and the rise of platforms that champion diverse voices, there's a gradual shift in the narrative. 
Young black artists are emerging, proudly wearing their country roots on their sleeves and challenging the traditional boundaries of the genre. The success of artists like Lil Nas X, despite initial controversies, marks a potential turning point. When dissecting the artistry of Tracy Chapman, one quickly discerns that her music is not merely a collection of melodies and verses. It's a profound reflection of the socio-political issues of her time. This quality is what sets her apart. Beyond her musical talents, Chapman has consistently used her platform to shed light on subjects that many in her position might choose to eschew for more mainstream, uncontroversial topics. Intriguingly, the roots of Chapman's activism can be traced back to her college years. At Tufts University, she became deeply involved in social justice movements, speaking up against apartheid in South Africa and championing the rights of the LGBTQ community. This period not only shaped her as an individual, but also influenced her approach to songwriting. Music became her medium to convey powerful messages and rally people around critical causes. Moreover, one of her lesser known feats is her involvement in charitable endeavors. For instance, she's been a staunch supporter of organizations that work to eliminate domestic violence. Understanding the power of her platform, Chapman has often used her concerts as fundraising opportunities, directing proceeds to charities that resonate with her principles. To understand the depth of her lyrical prowess, one must look at songs like Talkin' Bout a Revolution. At face value, it's a song that calls for change. However, a deeper dive into the lyrics reveals Chapman's nuanced understanding of systemic oppression and the collective action required to challenge it. She doesn't just allude to the issues, she lays them bare, forcing listeners to confront uncomfortable truths. Another example is Behind the Wall, a chilling a cappella piece on domestic violence. Chapman doesn't hide behind metaphors. The narrative is direct, stark, and sadly all too familiar for many. Her choice to present the song without instrumentation accentuates the gravity of the message, making it one of her most potent compositions. Her fight against racism, as detailed in the Rolling Stone article, showcases her commitment to challenging racial disparities. Shockingly, despite her success, Chapman wasn't immune to racism's insidious claws. She faced challenges, from microaggressions to overt racism, both inside and outside the music industry. Yet, she never let these experiences silence her. Instead, they fueled her resolve, making her voice even more critical in the fight against racial prejudice. Additionally, Chapman's understanding of intersectionality, especially in the context of her identity as a black lesbian woman, adds layers to her artistry. She's aware that oppressions are interconnected, and in her music, she often tackles multiple issues simultaneously. This ability to weave complex socio-political themes into her songs without compromising on their musical quality is a testament to her genius. Furthermore, Chapman's reticence about her personal life has often been misconstrued as secrecy. However, a closer look reveals a conscious choice to let her music speak for itself. While she's been open about her sexuality, she's never let it define her public persona. For Chapman, it's always been about the music and the messages embedded within. Yet despite her choice to maintain a low profile, the singer has often found herself at the center of media attention, not always for her music. Her lawsuit against Nicki Minaj over a sample clearance is one such instance. While many saw it as a mere legal tussle, those familiar with Chapman's principles understood it as a stand for artistic integrity. As a result of her multifaceted identity and her unwavering commitment to social justice, Chapman has inspired a generation of artists. Her influence extends beyond the charts or awards. It's seen in the scores of musicians who now use their platforms to advocate for change, echoing Chapman's legacy. All in all, Tracy Chapman's impact on the music industry and wider society cannot be understated. While many remember her for the poignant lyrics and evocative melodies of hits like Fast Car, her stretches far beyond individual tracks. Her sound was groundbreaking in many ways. When she stepped onto the scene, the mainstream music landscape was saturated with synth-heavy pop and rock anthems. Her acoustic-driven sound combined with soulful lyrics was a stark contrast, offering listeners a raw and honest musical experience. By doing so, she carved a niche for folk and acoustic artists in a largely electronic 80s music era, making space for artists like Jewel, Sean Colvin, and later Ed Sheeran. We've also seen that through her music, Chapman gave voice to marginalized communities and raised awareness about critical societal issues such as poverty, racism, and domestic violence. As a result, she inadvertently galvanized her listeners into action. 
fans began taking more interest in the topics she sang about, leading to increased awareness and activism in areas she highlighted. For instance, when she sang about economic disparities in Fast Car, she wasn't just painting a picture of a dream to escape poverty. She was highlighting a systemic issue that many of her listeners could relate to, and in doing so, initiated conversations about economic inequality in various circles. And while Chapman may not be frequently in the limelight regarding mentorship, her influence is evident in the works of many contemporary artists. Artists like Adele and Sam Smith have cited her as an inspiration, particularly praising her lyrical depth and the emotional intensity of her songs. Furthermore, many artists, even those outside of the folk and acoustic genres, have covered her songs or incorporated elements of her style into their music. This wide-ranging influence is a testament to the universal appeal and timelessness of her art. The singer's rise to fame came at a time when activism through music was genuine and often a career risk. Today, however, the landscape has shifted. Social activism in many ways has become commercialized. Artists often face scrutiny over the authenticity of their activist efforts, with critics questioning whether it's a genuine concern or a marketing strategy. Chapman's legacy serves as a reminder of a time when activism in music was not a commercial strategy, but a heartfelt endeavor. Her sincerity in addressing pressing issues set a gold standard for what it means to be genuinely committed to a cause, pushing modern artists to ensure authenticity in their activist endeavors. Her success is particularly noteworthy given the challenges she faced as a black lesbian woman in an industry historically dominated by white males. Her accomplishments paved the way for future black female artists and those from the LGBTQ community. By succeeding in the face of adversity, she demonstrated that talent could overcome societal prejudices and biases. While the industry still has a long way to go in terms of diversity and inclusion, Chapman's legacy serves as a beacon of hope. She stands as proof that with enough talent, determination, and integrity, barriers can be broken and new paths can be forged. Today, the narrative surrounding Tracy Chapman's experiences in the music industry paints a vivid picture of the systemic inequities faced by many artists, particularly those from marginalized communities. Recognizing these challenges, there has been a push in recent years for initiatives and programs designed to level the playing field. Record labels, music festivals, and award shows have started to prioritize diversity and inclusion. Programs like mentorships, talent showcases for underrepresented artists, and diversity training for industry professionals aim to rectify past wrongs. Organizations like Women in Music and the Black Music Action Coalition work tirelessly to provide resources, support, and advocacy for artists facing discrimination. However, while these efforts are commendable, there's still a long way to go. Initiatives need to move beyond mere tokenism and ensure that there's genuine inclusion, where diverse artists are given equal opportunities and resources to succeed. And while the onus is on the industry to change, consumers also play a pivotal role in shaping its future. With with the advent of streaming platforms and social media, artists can now connect directly with their audience, bypassing traditional gatekeepers. As listeners, we have the power to elevate voices that have been historically marginalized by actively seeking out and supporting diverse artists, attending their concerts, and purchasing their music. Consumers can drive demand for more inclusion in the music industry. Music journalists, critics, and the media also play a vital role in shaping perceptions. Often, they are the first to review albums, interview artists, and dictate music trends. As such, it's imperative that these entities reflect on their biases and ensure fair representation in their coverage. By giving equal space to artists from diverse backgrounds and addressing issues of systemic discrimination head-on, the media can challenge existing norms and pave the way for a more inclusive industry. To truly address systemic inequities, the approach must be holistic. It's not enough for one segment of the industry to change. All its facets, from record labels and producers to consumers and media, need to work in tandem. Additionally, addressing discrimination in the music world should not be a passing trend but a sustained effort. The industry must be willing to invest in long-term strategies such as talent development programs for marginalized communities and diversity audits to ensure they're making genuine progress. Given the challenges and the long road ahead, it's easy to become disheartened. But there's reason for optimism. With each passing year, there are more diverse voices breaking into the mainstream. Artists from different racial, gender, and S backgrounds are charting hits, selling out shows, and making their mark. 
Tracy Chapman's journey in the industry while fraught with challenges is also a testament to the power of resilience, talent, and authenticity. It's a beacon of hope for countless artists who, inspired by her legacy, believe in a brighter, more inclusive future for the music industry. In essence, let Tracy Chapman's journey serve not just as a reflection of past challenges, but as a beacon, lighting the path toward a future where talent thrives, free from bias, prejudice, and systemic barriers. A future where every voice, no matter its origin, can find its rightful place on the global stage. And in doing so, may we find strength in unity, understanding, and the transformative power of music. And that's it from us today. Until next time, thank you for watching.